no, no, look at somebody and say, God, stir me up. So I don't become too comfortable. How many know that God will stir you up so you won't become too comfortable? Amen? Is there anybody going through a stir-up period in their life right now? And, and, and God says, I don't, I don't want you to become too comfortable. Amen. I was talking to somebody, and I was saying, you know what's interesting about us sometimes is that we, we, we have a journey. We have a journey um, going through the process. We fighting, and we going through all this. And, and, but I found out a lot of times the biggest struggle comes is one time you get into the promised land. Sometimes the children is children Israel got into the promised land and, and, that's, and they got a little too comfortable and God and things had to get stirred up because they got a little comfortable and started putting their eyes on the wrong things and everything. But I want to take you to a, a place today. Say, but look at someone say, if I keep your eyes on Jesus. Why? Because he gives me joy. Amen. See, keep your eyes up on the Lord. Because he has to be your point of where your joy comes from, your peace. Amen? Keep your eyes upon the Lord. I want you to turn with me take to Matthews 14. We're just going to go in and let God have his way. Amen? Amen. And we're going to start reading at the 22nd verse on 14, Matthew 14, the 22nd verse. And I want us to look at somebody and say, let your spiritual ears be open. Don't let no one distract you. Just let your spiritual ears be open. Amen. So look at somebody and say, I came to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. Okay, let's get started then. Start reading at the, the 22nd verse, and it says, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. I want you to write down, I want you to underline immediately this. Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side. First, I want you to understand that Jesus is the one Jesus, everybody say, Jesus said it. And Jesus said, I want you to look at somebody and say, go to the other side. Jesus is the one telling them, I want you to go to the other side. How many of us know that you didn't want to get saved? It was Jesus that you heard, and Jesus began to want to take you to the other side. Amen. Jesus wants to, did anybody find yourself in a lot of trouble, going through a lot of situations in your life, and Jesus interfered and God said, let me take you to the other side. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you, that's why you can sing that song, He gives me joy. Why? Because he was the one that took you to the other side. He gave you a word to go to the other side. Amen? It's a powerful thing then when God gives a word. When God gives a word, it's powerful because the fact is, and when God, I love the fact that when God gives a word because God's word is like revelation. It's a vision. It's the insight. And God is telling them, and I'm going to tell you what was interesting this, just for time's sake. Jesus had just fed 5,000. I mean, he had five loaves and two fish. And he had just fed a whole bunch of people. And, he, and, and now Jesus, they done sat down. They done saw the power of God. That they, they have seen the glory of God. How many of you know that you get saved and God saved you and you saw the power of God, the glory of God? Because how many of you know it was the power and the glory of God that saved you? Amen. And he says, go to the other side. He said, get in the boat and go to the other side. He read. While he sent the multitudes away. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. How many of us know that Jesus has gone up to? When he, he sends you to the other side, when he gives you the word to go to the other side, when he gives you the word. The Bible says you're, we're in this world, but we're no longer of this world. God is sending you to the other side. He's, when you accept Christ, you are being sent to the other side. You're being sent to the spiritual side. You're being sent to the kingdom. You're being sent to go to the other side. 
and Jesus is up on the right hand side of the Father. And the Bible says he went up to pray. And the Bible tells us, how many know that the Bible says he makes intercession for us? He's now gone up, and the Bible says he is praying. Now, I, I, I love the fact that Jesus is praying because that means he's in contact with the Father and knows everything going on, but he is giving you a word. How many of you know that a lot of times when God gives you a word that he, he's, he, he's up there, he's doing something, he's, he's praying, that he's interceding for you as he gave you the word, amen? He gives you a word. He gives you a revelation. He's going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to give you this word. And, I, I, I'm a, and God will speak to you. He will speak to you. He might, and I don't know what area God may be speaking to you about today. But I know that when God begins to speak to you, he, it's funny that he, and, and you think he's, he's, he's looking at them, but he's up praying to the Father. He's up, in, and even in the, right now, he's right beside the Father communicating about you and I why he has given you a word. In other words, God, sometimes, because sometimes we think God give us a word and we like, man, okay, God, what's going on? He's interceding. He's praying. He knows what's because why? He doesn't give you a word without understanding what comes along with a word. Amen. Amen. He understands what's going to come along with that word. So he, gave, he gives us the word, and now he's praying for you. Keep on going. Say thank you. Oh, somebody listen to me. Somebody should look at somebody and say, I'm so glad God praying for me. I'm so glad Jesus praying for me. I am so glad he's standing in the gap for me. Amen? Look at somebody say, now, watch this. Don't, don't, and do this, because I'll be tripping. Okay, go ahead. Now, when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now, I want you to understand this. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble. I like the, I like the New Living Translation. It said, while he was praying to the Father, they were following his word, and they found themselves in trouble. See, some of us going to get this. What do you mean God gave me a word, and I'm doing what God told me, but while I'm doing what God told me, I find myself in trouble. Anybody obey God, did what God told you to do, and found yourself in trouble. I, I, I like the way, I love the way it's written in, 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 in um, New Living Translation. It says that, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far from the land. Now, what you got to understand is, y'all got to get this. <laughs> it wasn't when they first started out. It's not when they first started out. It's when they got to a place where they might have been too far to turn back. Have you ever followed God's word and, and you, you know, got into it and now you don't can't, you're like, it's, I, I, it's too far, I can't get back to the land. And what's causing me not to get back to the land is the trouble. So I feel like I'm stuck. Anybody ever been there? I feel like I stuck. I know I don't want to go back in the world. I know I want to do that thing back in the world, but I, I, and I'm following the word of God and the word of God, I, I, he told me to get in the boat and go to the other side. I'm, I'm going to the other side, but on the way to the other side, on the way to doing what God has told me to do, I find myself in trouble. Oh, this is a good word. I, I'm like, find yourself in trouble. Find yourself in trouble. And see, for religious people, this don't make sense because religious people say, well, if I do what God tells me to do, why am I going through all this? Religious people perceive that, you know what, because I, I, I got saved, I, when I got saved, I, I'm, I'm supposed to be good, everything's supposed to be perfect, I'm supposed to get 40 acres and a mule, you know what I'm saying, I'm supposed to be getting everything that's God, everything God promised to me, I'm supposed to be getting, God, where my, where my bed at, God, where, where, my, where, my, where my job paying the big money at, God, I, you want me to say, but I want you to go to the other side. God, I, I'm obeying your word, but on the way to obeying your word, I done ran into trouble. Anybody? God, I'm doing what you told me to do. But I don't ran into trouble. And I'm too far gone. I can't quit. I can't give up. I can't stop. I'm too. I love how he said they too far. They said he said it on purpose. They too far from the land. In other words, they had enough faith to pursue, but on the way to pursuing, they ran into a storm. 
It's amazing that sometimes, see, and you know what's funny about when you run into a storm, when you're on the way, you, you start wondering if God said it. Bro, was there, are we sure that was Jesus that told us to go to the other side? He had to know that something was going to be going on. See, God said, hold up. Let me, we can do offering all that later. Let's talk about, because some of us in this room, you, 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 you're like, is this God? I don't know. I, I, I got married. You said this was my husband. And you said this was my wife. You, you said this was my job. You said this was my, my, my opportunity. But why am I running into trouble? I ran into some trouble. I'm so glad. Now, y'all got to get this. Why I'm running into trouble, Jesus in the mountain, what? I'm running into trouble, and he's interceding. Somebody say, keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep on going. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. I want you to understand something. The thing they were caught, the thing that chose them, to, what God is using to take you to the other side, start acting up. Oh, they don't want to talk. Nobody want to talk to me at night. It start acting up. The water start, the winds and the storms, they on the... Come on, man. You be like, okay, God, you, you told me to do this. This this gonna be a this husband gonna be a good husband. He start acting up. God, this wife you gave me, I know she gonna be a good wife. I, I learned and it just we started. I just know we had this little beautiful ceremony. You know how they had a little beautiful ceremony. They had the 12 people walking down the aisle, and everybody was like, they had the big old cake, and everybody like, ah, this is the most beautiful weapon. And then they go to their honeymoon. Oh, they in Hawaii, and the sun is glistening off their forehead, and they're like, and all is good. And then they get back, and she started tripping. Or he started tripping. God, you told me to go. I, this is, you know, when they, you graduate from college, you go graduate from college, you got your degree, God said, okay, go over here. This is the job. They hired, you talk up, you testified about, ah, they gave me this job. Yeah, they said they don't usually hire people straight out of college, but they hired me. You're like, Jesus, you in church running back and forth, burning up the carpet, talking about it. And now all of a sudden, you in trouble. And now you're talking about, did God really say this job did God is this really the woman you was talking about is this really the man you was talking about God I, God I done ran into some trouble when God started ministering to me I was like cause you know you first part take me like okay Lord I done ran into some trouble and now they in trouble Jesus praying the winds and the very thing that's supposed to take them to the other side has stirred up and caused them to have trouble. Go ahead. About three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. Jesus came toward them walking on the water. Wait a minute, hold up. You know what? When people used to preach this, when people preach this, it caught me off guard because as I studied it, when God brought it to me, that I never really paid attention to when the storm started. And usually when I've heard it preached, the storm looked like it started way back. It didn't start immediately. It almost, if you don't study it, you will think it was good from the beginning. I mean good all along. You think it was Jesus. No, 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 but watch this. So that means when Jesus comes and they see, oh, you gotta get this, you gotta get this. When they see Jesus come and say, that's, say, that's my vision. When they see Jesus coming, what's amazing is they see Jesus. See, we like to preach it that Jesus is walking on the water. But God says, let me give you another, let me give you another angle. He says, remember now, they said that they are in trouble. And the winds and the storms are rising up. But now, 
Jesus is walking on their trouble. Somebody going to get it. Wait a minute. The thing that has them in trouble, Jesus is, is walking on it. See, a lot of times we, see, we're so busy trying to look at the supernatural thing, but God is saying, yes, he's walking on, but the water that he's walking on is not peaceful. He's walking on the thing that we perceive that has us in trouble. Jesus has learned to overcome. That's why you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Why? Because he has been able to walk on the thing that you think has you in trouble. Well, I got a problem with unforgiveness. Well, Jesus knows how to walk on the thing that you have trouble with. Well, I have a, I have a problem with lust. Well, Jesus knows how to walk on the thing that you have trouble with. Anybody get what God's saying today? Keep your eyes on Jesus because he's already mastered the thing that's going to try you. I'm like, man, and that thing caught my attention. I'm like, he, he walking on the trouble. The word said they, they ran into some trouble because the winds began and the waves began to roar up. But if you read the scripture, it never said that the waves and the winds had ceased when, Jesus, when they saw Jesus. That means that Jesus is now walking on the thing that has them stuck. See, what's funny is many of us will feel, find ourselves feeling trouble, weighed down, heavy, aggravated, frustrated about things that Jesus has already walked over. Can teach you how to overcome in it. To teach you how to get victory with it. Amen? Jesus is walking on their trouble. Anybody want to, how many of you know whatever you're going through, Jesus is walking on your trouble. Jesus has already triumphed in that area. You know what I found out? Anybody ever found this out? That's why you can have joy. Because you believe that you can conquer something when you've seen somebody do it. Somebody else's testimony encourages you. Why? Because you don't, why? Because you felt hopeless and aggravated, but somebody else's testimony can make you realize, I can do that. If they did that, if God did it for them, he could do it for me. But we want to look at Jesus. Keep on reading. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In they fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. See, the thing about it is, y'all got to understand what was going on. Why were the disciples terrified? Because, because the storm was going on. You have to focus when a storm is going on. Y'all be what I'm saying? How many know when a storm is going on, it's hard to see in front of you? But they, had, they thought it was a ghost because the storm, they had, see, they, they thought it was a ghost. When you're going through something, it's hard to focus. Sometimes all we see is the trouble we're going through. All we see is what we're going through. We're like, man, we're in the midst of it. Aren't we? The, the enemy wants you to see nothing but the, and I can picture if you've ever been in a situation where there's wind and, and it's raining hard, like it was raining all yesterday, it was cutting up, it, it was raining hard. If you're driving, thank God the windshield wipers, because why? Because when it's driving, you have to focus closely to be able to see where you're going. Jesus had them in the storm. Gee, they in a storm, they in trouble, but they have, when you are in trouble, that's when you have to keep, you have to sharpen your focus skills. Because Satan's job is to try to get you to look at the trouble. His job is to get you to believe. That's where hopelessness come from. That's where people start battling with suicide. That's where all these things come from. Why? Because you feel hopeless because you can't see your way out the trouble. But I know somebody who has the power to walk on your trouble. And I don't know about you, and the enemy be in your ear. 
They don't like you. They this. They that. They that. And, he, and, your, and your eyes are getting dull, and you can't see, and you keep seeing the situation, and you keep seeing it, and you're getting aggravated, you're getting frustrated, you're getting hopeless, because you have taken your eyes off the one who has the power to walk through what you're in trouble with. I want to say this today, and I want us to grasp this. It ain't about hooping and hollering and screaming in here today. It's about hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Because we in a time today, you better stay focused on the one who can walk through your storm, who can lead you through your storm. Because the enemy is trying to pick people off because they are getting, because the, the Christians don't feel like, they, the sons and daughters don't want to pray. They got heaviness. They, they, they aggravated. They frustrated. They, why? Because they thought, some people thought actually following Christ that there was not going to be no storms. Did we not read the scripture where the Bible says that the wise man builds his house up on the rock and the foolish man builds his house up on the sand? Did we not understand in that scripture it says that the winds and storms descended against both houses? Just because you are in Christ don't mean storms not coming. I don't know, maybe we, maybe we confuse walking with God with the fairy tales of America, the fairy tale stories. The, 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 the prince on the horse and riding by dun, 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 and got a sword and you know Prince Charming gets off his horse and grabs you and picks you up like this and rides off and then you see the castle later on and then the flowers are falling from the sky and the sun is glistening and everybody's like Holy are you? and everybody like, then they live they say they live happily ever after say not till you get to the other side You got a word that's going to take you through a process. See, a lot of times when God speak, you are not who you need to be when he, give, when he speaks to you. Well, y'all better hear what I'm saying. But he speaks to you because he know that you are able. He know that he has placed something in you that is able to what? Everybody say, believe. The men that God chose, it wasn't that they were qualified. There was just something inside of Moses. There was something inside of David. There was something inside of uh, Joshua that just believed that God was able. Even when they ran into their storms. There were times that God would speak to the men and women of God, and it wouldn't happen right away. Amen? It wouldn't develop right away. Let me, before I finish the story, let me, let me give you an illustration of what I'm talking about. God gives a word. Amen? I, I, I want y'all to follow me. God gives a word, and when God gives a word, it's like a vision. Say a vision. Everybody know that God, because when, y'all got to understand something. When God gives a word to a man and a woman, or a child, whoever God gives a word to, that word is revelation into God's vision. Y'all know that, right? It becomes a vision. And when you get a vision, and God showed me, he gave me a dream. Yesterday. He said, I'm doing exactly how he told me to do. A vi what does a vision do? A vision begins to create a pattern. A vision, I want y'all to look up, look at this. It creates a pattern. It creates something that God wants. Amen. And God gives a vision. And when God gives a vision, I, I, he begins to Come here, Michelle. Come here. Y'all yeah, some of some of some people gonna get the revelation of this already. Come get your vision, girl. Come stand over here. Hold your vision. He gives, stand over here, stand over here and hold your vision. He gives a pattern. Now, he ho hold the vision like, but there you go, you got it. No, you good. Okay. That's, he said, that's the vision. God gives a vision. Go to the other side. Oh, this is going to be good. And he gives a vision, and, 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 and she can see the vision. And sometimes, you know, when God gives a vision, and and what's it, you got it cut out. He said, no, that's my vision. I can see it. I want to make this thing happen. How I many know we, we want to make it happen? We want to make that vision happen. 
And the Bible says faith is the what? Substance. But why Michelle has her vision, <laughs> if I know that's not enough. Some people gonna get this. That's not enough. That does not, the vision does not produce the finished product. It just tells you what he's doing. It tells you what he wants. Can I get amen? The children of the watch this. They knew he wanted them to go to the other side. Amen? They know, in other words, that's your vision. That's your, and you cut out, you know your vision. And when you have your vision, and God gives you this beautiful piece, and he gives you this. But she, and why she's, God has given her, and she's studying her vision, and she's believing in her vision. You believe in your vision? People try to come by, they might try to snatch your vision. Be like, it's my vision. Get your hands off. It's my vision. It's my vision. But how many of you know, y'all better get this, y'all got to get this, y'all got to get this. When you get the vision, she got the vision. And I know one thing about Michelle, she going to take off. She going to take off on the vision. But when she take off on the vision, sometimes you run into. And she got the word. The word has been declared all over international, all over the world. This is the vision. But what's interesting is, I, I, I'm not going to tell you, in the dream, gosh, because when I was in the dream, I was making a shirt, and then I wanted a jacket. I, I wanted a jacket, and when I wanted a jacket, I, I, I saw this older woman, and she was in a dream, and she was in a dream, and she was, you know, it was, she was an island woman, too, I think from Jamaica. She was an island woman. You know, island women, man, they was like, they know how to sew. I ain't, I, I, some island women, they know how to sew. Them old, them, 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 come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Them old grandmamas, in which name, you, they, they know how to sew. They, they know how to sew. They know, they know how to, and she said, baby, I'm going to make your jacket. I was like, in the dream, she said, I'm going to make your jacket. She said, but you got to go get some things. And one thing in the dream, I had to go get a pattern. I had, and I, when, I went, when I was looking for the pattern, and I saw the mannequin, I saw this mannequin, and this mannequin had a nice outfit on. Because, see, you got to see where you, see, they come by what? See, she got to do like this, Michelle. You got to see the vision when nobody else can see it. See, the problem with some people is that, Though they ran into trouble, they couldn't see the other side. Y'all with me? Sometimes, see, you, you, so you might not be able to see the other side. In the marriage, sometimes you can't see the other side. Sometimes you feel like you can't see. All you can see is the Word of God. Y'all been hear what I'm saying? That's why they call it faith. All you can see is the Word of God because you can't see the other side, but you believe that the one who spoke it has the ability to what? Produce it. See, people, so now you've got to see the vision. And when you see the vision, you know what? And she's saying, okay, God, I see the vision, and I know I believe the vision. And you cast off, and they on their way. But why, why God gave the woman of God the vision, Jesus is making intercession. Because he know that, watch this, he would have never gave it to her if he knew that he hadn't placed something in her that she would cast away from the land. So, Woo! See, God ain't going to give you nothing if he don't trust you to cast away. In other words, if he don't believe that you're going to believe him at least to start out, he ain't giving it to you. If he, if he don't believe that you don't have enough faith in him to say, God, I believe you. I'll take some steps out and go do this. God says, I want But there's one thing the woman of God, does. she said, I need something else. <laughs> What you need, woman of God? What you need? She, she said, word, faith. Faith is the what? Uh -uh. Substance of what? Okay. Now you got the vision. You can see it. You're trying to get people to see it. And some people are like, girl, out. that's just a piece of, I don't see what you're doing. Faith is the substance of things hopeful. I looked up the word substance, and the word substance means what? No, no, no. I could, you said it. Material. Remember last week he said the word substance. I said, God, you know how to make this thing on. He said, substance to the vision is material. I need material to produce what I'm and what happened. Because in the dream, when I went and got this, and then I saw the image first, and I went and I put the pattern on there. I put the pattern on the counter. I went to scissors. But I was like, I said, man, I want it just like this. I was searching for material. He said, what happens many times that the trouble that we run into is our ability to believe that God can create the material. Though you have the vision, because God established the vision to, finish, to be able to produce what you need, 
you need material. And what's funny is that you never know. You never know who got the material. You never know who God don't use to bring the material. You never know who has the material. See, the vision is good, but the vision got to have the material. Because if you don't have the material, people can't see it on you. Come on. Oh, see, if the vision is just in a pattern form, all they can see is what you want to do. But when God began to wait, it tarried for a while. It will speak for itself. Because God says, I want to put it together that people can see my glory. See, what I got to she go like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do people like, girl, you ain't even got no money. Girl, you ain't even, people don't even know you like that. Girl, you don't even, you ain't even hooked up like that. What you mean you want to be international? They don't even know you in Fort Lauderdale yet. What you talking about? What you talking about? You talking about international? Y'all got, be strong, I-N-T. Y'all need to stop flogging. We're not flogging. We can just see the vision. We can see the vision. But see, I said, God, somebody said, God. I need, some I need some material. Now you better say it like you mean it. God, I need, I need some material. And they say the next time you go give us some material. They say, we got to say it one more time. Because faith moves God. See, See, let me tell you how you know she in direct communication with God. Let me tell you how you know you're in direct communication with God. Because the vision is not yours. It was given to you. <laughs> and the Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. But see, sometimes, woman of God, y'all got to get this. this. He says, I'm not finished with the vision. Oh, there you go. Because I'm not finished with the vision. So he just say, come here, Barbara. Come here. So he says, hold up. What I'm going to do is I gave you a part. But there's more pieces to the pattern. Y'all, some people are going to get this. He said, there's more pieces to the pattern. Because God is a body God. He never gives one person the total vision. I'm just telling you what he showed me. He said, I never give one person the vision because I'm a body God. If I give one person the vision, then they become, then everybody else becomes insignificant. What I do is I give pieces. Why? Because I'm building a family, and I want you to understand how much you need one another. And sometimes, just speaking for myself, I, I can just speak for myself. You can get prideful, and you think you got the pieces. You think you got this one piece, and nobody else. And you get so prideful, you be like, man, God, I got the God. Like, hold up, you ain't got, I didn't give you, I, yeah, I gave you a great piece, but you ain't got all the pieces. See, the only way that this piece will accept this piece, pride got to be gone. Because it's easy for this piece. I can say, well, God say, oh, this is going to be good. Anybody been blessed? God can say, I can say, well, this is my piece. And then God can say, oh, Barry. I can say, well, my piece, I know my piece. My piece, I got this. I got this. I'm good. But how many know that this by itself can't produce what God wants? Oh, they ain't, they ain't. I'm trying to, we think, I'm trying to show you kingdom mentality. I'm trying to show you the young king's mentality. And the young king's mentality, let us stand up together and build the kingdom of God. And the young king's mentality, I didn't have, watch this, five starters didn't come from me. Somebody gonna get it. Somebody gonna get it. Fruit bearers didn't come from me. No, I can't tell you. I didn't make the name. I didn't create it. I didn't. No, 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 I didn't. God gave it to somebody else. He gave it to somebody else. But I had to be humble enough to let. Come on, go do what God told you to do. Go make what God told you to make. Why? Understanding that the pieces have to operate together. Because why? Because it's bigger than you. That God will never give you a vision that you can do by yourself. 
He too much. Oh, my God, my God, my God. He always will stretch you beyond you. He will give you something that you don't have the capabilities to do. He will give you something that you can't even imagine to do. Why? Because he wants you to see your greatness. He wants you to see that I can make you great. He says, but then, see, if I say this and I say, I don't need Michelle, I don't need Barbara. Could you imagine a pair of pants just going around with the top <laughs> Like, I'm going to be like, that brother got issues. <laughs> that brother is exposed. Oh, I hear you. Know See, when you don't understand this concept, you will look naked. <laughs> you will look naked. Why? Because you're missing somebody you need. Come on, church. You are missing somebody you need. They in the boat going to the other side, but they were missing something they needed. And they're going. And the pieces. I saw this all in a vision. I saw this all in a dream. I was like, yeah. And God, see, I got to be able to come here. And I got to be able to go ahead and have it. And she got to be able to go there. Oh, we can't fulfill what God is saying. See, the church today, I want you to, God's building the church. And what the church has said in their heart is, I don't need you. I don't need you. This is my church. It's my church. And I don't need you. I don't need, I don't need new birth. I don't need divine hope. I don't need, I'm like, and then people wonder why the church look naked. Why it look exposed and no people are like, man, what, what should I believe? Should I be a Catholic? Should I be a Baptist? Should I be a Pentecostal? Which one is it? I don't understand who I'm supposed to be. Because none of y'all, you know, I mean, you can't have a meeting. You can't have a meeting because if you have a meeting, then they're going to want, everybody want their, their, their piece to be seen. They don't understand that the pieces don't operate, the pieces cannot operate separately. When they operate separately, could you imagine if, let her go, Barbara, let her go. And Barbara started walking, because watch it, she walking with one pants leg. See, we become, <laughs> we can become so perverted that we think that look good. She walk, now watch this. <laughs> she just, walking with one pants leg, going to leave you still exposed. <laughs> go back over. God says, but no matter as God give the pieces, he said, without material, people won't see what I'm doing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When God give a vision, you can't see how it's going to happen. But the word is the substance. And I don't know who has the material. I can't tell who has the material. But one day, while we believing and we preparing, because watch this, you preparing, and we putting it together like your piece, oh, I like your piece, and my piece is the band, so we can go like this, and, and then, oh, that look good, and the pieces are going together. But we like, man, we need money. Man, we need this, and we need that, God, we need some stuff. But watch this, God is interceding. Why? Because it's his vision. See, if we don't accomplish it, we're going to blame him. Because he the one gave it to us. Y'all understand? So on the count of three, I want everybody to holler material. On the count of three. Y'all so fast. One. One. Three. And all of a sudden, not knowing where it came from. Come on, come on, somebody. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, I love the fact, I didn't even do this. God told the woman to bring blue. All, blue stands for ministry. All of a sudden, the material, what you need, it comes. It's coming. It's coming. Say, it's coming. Look at this. It's coming. Stop crying. It's coming. Stop being frustrated. It's coming. Stop being aggravated. It's coming. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. It's coming. For faith is the substance. The substance is coming. He said it's coming. Watch this. Hold that for me, Barbara. He said, watch this. I'm going to show you that. Watch what happens. They in trouble. I'm about to bring it home. This thing is going to be a long message. They're about to bring it home. They in trouble on the water. Guess what happens? 
they look out and see Jesus. Y'all better see it. They see Jesus walking on their trouble. What I want to tell you is, God sees your trouble. He's on his way. Whatever word he spoke, he has the ability. He is the material. He is the material to build what he is building. Whatever word he spoke, he is the material. Watch it. Y'all ever notice this? Before, let me see. Let me, let me, before, all you can see is what they wanted to be. But now, you can see the glory. Now somebody else can be able to feed into it. Now watch this. As Jesus is walking on the water, you can read it for yourself, but I'm going to break it down for you. Peter, you got 12 disciples on the boat in trouble. But Peter saw Jesus not walking on water, but walking on his trouble. Eleven of them said, I'm just going to stay where it's safe. Oh, my God. Eleven of them said, I'll just stay right here where it's safe. But one person said, one person said, teach me how to walk through my trouble. Teach me how to walk through my trouble. Teach me how to walk through trouble. I don't want to be in a place where I'm crying and, and saying and scared. I don't want to be scared no more. I don't want to be afraid no more. Get give me to walk on my trouble. I'm not going to stay home under the cover no more. I'm not going to be in my room crying no more. Teach me how to walk through my trouble. Teach me how to walk through my trouble. Twelve disciples, but only one said, I want to learn how to walk through trouble. He said, Lord, beckon me to come to you. Watch well, this, I got to get this. I just don't want to do what you tell me. I want to look like you too. I don't want to just do what you tell me. Yeah, you told me to go to the other side. But I want to look like you. I want to go to the other side and when people look at me, I'm walking through trouble. I'm walking through trouble. I'm walking through trouble. I'm walking through trouble. Why, why are you not crying? I learned. Because a long time ago, I learned how to get out the boat. A long time ago, I learned to keep my eyes up on the Lord. When things get crazy and your friends start scattering and people don't want to talk to you no more, don't get mad at them. Don't think, no, no. So that's okay. I'm going to learn how to walk through trouble so I can love you even when you won't love me. So I can forgive you when you won't forgive me. So I can give when you won't give to me. I want to be like Jesus. I don't want to just do what Jesus say. I want to be like him. He says, walk on trouble. Peter, Peter, y'all know Peter was crazy though. <laughs> Peter like, Lord, if you can do it, look at somebody say, look at somebody say, if Jesus can do it, then I can do it. Could you imagine a church get that bowl? Could you imagine if you got that bowl? They talking about, you can't do this. You ain't going to, you can't come. If Jesus did it, I can do it. Uh, that's, that's when they're going to really hate you. People going, ooh, they, because they're going to say, who you think you are? You think you Jesus? Who you think you are? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a child of the king. And I'm not me. Jesus said, you shall do what I have done and even greater. That's, that's the word. So if Jesus can love somebody, I better get this revelation. If Jesus can love somebody who's slapping him, Okay, Jesus, if you did it, I can do it. If Jesus can love somebody who reject him, okay, come on now. He rode his boys for three years. They left him hanging to die. At his worst moment, they left one betrayed him, one denied him, and Tim just left him hanging. And yet he came back and restored them. So if Jesus can love, then I can love my father. 
if Jesus can love people who can reject them, then if I keep my eyes on Jesus, I learn how to love my baby daddy who reject me. For the, the Bible says that if the branch be kept connected to the vine, it will bear much fruit. But the Bible says if the branch is not connected, it can do nothing in itself. I can't love you in myself. Oh, I need Jesus. Because if you cross me, I'm going to cross you. If you come out your mouth wrong to me, I'm going to tell you what time it is. But since I got my eyes on the one who can be able to walk on trouble, you're going to think I'm crazy because when you curse me out, I'm going to be blessing you. You're like, what's wrong with you? It's Jesus. I promise you it's Jesus. I promise you, I, I, I guarantee you it's Jesus. And guess what? You know it's Jesus. Because you know you can feel your flesh. Say it. Say it. Jesus like, you know, I know, you know when we be in trouble, you know Jesus be like, Lord, help him, Lord, help him, Lord, please help him, Lord, help him, please, Lord, help him. Because he know you're going to want to go in your flesh. But Jesus is making intercession for you, crying out for you and saying, hold on to the word I gave you. Walk in the word I gave you. Walk in the word I gave you. Y'all got to get this. See, we're not finished. See, because once you get the material, see, that's just the beginning. Because, and I want y'all to understand something. See, what God is doing has many pieces. Y'all better see. See, we, 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 used to, we, we, we try to get used to this fake gospel that's all about, it's all about one man. This fake, it is all about Jesus. But the new gospel, Jesus said, when Jesus called, he made 12 men just like him. He said, now rise up and let's go build a kingdom. We not know, it's not about Apostle Alberry. Everybody in this room, God is anointed and empowering you, equipping you, why? To build the kingdom. You are not insignificant. You might not be the leg. You might just be the band. But the band, how many know, how many know the band is no good? <laughs> the legs are no good without the band. Y'all ain't hearing me. If you don't put no band on them legs, them legs going to fall down. And you're going to be exposed again. The band is as important as the leg. Amen? And watch this. So once God begins to give the faith, because watch this. He gives the women of God the vision. He says, now, God says, since I gave you the vision, I'm the material. So anytime you think you are lacking, just look to me. Those who wait upon the Lord shall mount up on wings. Look to me. Because sometimes God may not release this yet. Because how many know this can't be released into pieces in order? Because you'll find yourself continuously going back and recutting. So there are pieces still, God says, I'm not finished yet. So God says, if God has not released something to you, it's because he's not finished yet. Y'all don't. Yeah. Amen? And every once in a while, see, we think, y'all got to get this. Like, oh, God, hold on. Come here, Mike. How does God build up our faith when, stand right there, when he has not released the material yet? I need, uh, let, me, let me get my piece. I know I love y'all. Can, can I hold my piece? I just want to put it right here. So I can feel a part of y'all. Okay. Now, watch this. How does God keep us encouraged? Because he's constantly adding pieces. Amen. And when he adds pieces, we feel encouraged. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. But we have not got the material yet. See, sometimes we confuse the adding pieces is the material. No. But why, does, but why don't we get excited? Because we can see what God is doing developing more. Like, wait a minute. This person going to come do what? Oh, this person going to do what? We are rejoicing because we're seeing the pieces come more. Why do we know this is not the material yet? Because material is always more than enough. Thank you. Why did God speak about the five loaves and the two fish before he spoke about going to the other side? So his disciples would know, and they collected 12 fragments, baskets, so his disciples will understand whatever I say 
it's never just a little. It's always more than you expect. It's always, God says, when I, when you might get little crumbs, but if you get little crumbs, do not confuse the soul with the seed. What am I saying? Sometimes a seed is there to sow. I give, you know why God can trust the woman of God? He says, I give seed to the sower. See, when you can sow, he can give seed. See, sometimes we look at that crazy. If I stop sowing and think it's about me, then there's no more seed. But as long as I sow and I give, okay, you, that's your piece. You, that's your piece. Come here, stand up. See, oh, look over there. That's your piece. Come here. Boy, I feel this. I feel the spirit of the Lord. That's your peace. Stand up when you get your peace. That's your peace. Stand back there. Stand back where you at. Because sometimes the pieces, uh, 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 young lady in the middle, come here. That's your peace. Hold a piece. Hold a piece. Okay, that's it. Okay. So I want you to sit down for a minute. You sit down for a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold a piece. See, delay doesn't mean no. It means preparation. Because God will bring that peace. And they're like, oh my God, we're getting there. We're rejoicing. But see, he still got a piece he developing on back there. And therefore, it seemed like you were at a standstill. It seemed like, and he working on things. And then he'd say, rise up. Right there, rise up. Yeah. And he'd say, and see, God, rise. Now start walking. And I want you to walk this way slow. And God, a move is slow. But you can see it coming. Why? Because your faith is so built up through seeing the pieces that God has established. You, look at somebody say, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. I know I don't need the money yet. I don't need all the material yet. I've still got to get the pieces Go right there. And you got to be glad to see you here. Yeah, the pieces, you got to be glad to see the pieces. You got to be glad to see the pieces. You got to make, come on, I'm being serious. You got to be glad to see the pieces. Rise up. Rise up, girl. Rise up. All the pieces don't look alike. They don't all function the same way. In the back, all the way in the back, come here. And sometimes, watch this. Stop right there, hold it up, hold it up in the air, hold it up here. Sometimes it's the small pieces that we be tripping about. Sometimes we like, that's not relevant. That's not, because we, 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 we get excited with the big pieces. Oh man, but see, sometimes we get so excited with the big pieces, that we think we can put it together without the small pieces. You can't put it together without a small piece. Every, look at somebody say, every piece is significant. So when we get rejoiceful about the big piece and we throw a party, when we see a small piece, we're like, come on, y'all, get happy. Uh, yeah. Because the Bible says that the piece that may seem the least valuable the butt, if that piece don't, watch, what if that's the piece to cover up the back butt part right here? You know what I'm saying? You need a piece to cover up the butt. If you don't have no piece to cover, you're like you're all your butt all over the place. You're like, you know what I'm saying? You got to have a piece. To, and people don't really want to, that, like, that's just a small piece. She ain't nobody. She ain't, she ain't special. She ain't really nobody. Without her piece, you ain't covered. Every piece covers. Come on, we ain't forgot about And watch this. She over I, I, I love her. I'm going to tell you I love her because she, she on the edge of her seat like this. When is my turn? When is my turn? Y'all better hear what God said today. When God said, that's how you ought to be in church. When my turn? When my turn? I'm going to rejoice when she was coming. See, when you know you got a turn, you can rejoice when somebody turns. See, you 
and rejoice when you see somebody else change because you know you got a peace. Come on, if you know you got a peace, stand up and praise. And watch this. There's a prize. And we learn this. I learned this in ministry. I learned this with my wife. I learned this in my job. Sometimes pieces can take years. Because the vision is so big, it's so big. That's, you don't believe me? Doesn't the scripture say, he who endure to the end? Because God has been working on this piece over here, and she's been struggling, and she's been crying. She's been wondering what her purpose is. She's been in, she's she been going to church, and she ain't, and God says, now is your time. And she get up. Come on. And the reason why we rejoice, because we understand. Now watch this. God will bring the woman of God. He bring the material. Come here, woman of God. Put it down right here. He'll bring the woman of God. And he says, now that I got the pieces, somebody get me. I got to pin your vision to my material. I have to pin your vision to my material. I got to let people see that they won. I got to let people see that they want. And then we go, and we got to fit it, right? But let me tell you something. See, some people, woman of God, they'll put it here. And they'll try to pin it here because they don't understand that that material, because they think it's about them. Oh. But see, they got, and see, if they start pinning it here, what'll happen? Lord, no, I ain't. <laughs> I can do this. Okay. Now, see, look right here. If you think it's about you, you're a waste. They ain't getting it. When you, see, that's why we got preachers who go in the jail. People financially waste and get caught. Why? Because they thought it was about them. They thought it was about their vision, so they was wasteful. They didn't understand that when God gave them something, when God gave them material, let that material be a, good, be a good steward and put it to a place that you're conservative because understanding that guess what? There's more after you. Oh my God. And he says, pin it down some, uh, Michelle, stop pin it down. And God begins to, he get that scissors. Because God is getting ready to cut your, your piece and your material is going to be come together. Now watch this. Even though the vision come together, the piece, the material is there. But it may take a while still for some of us to get our material. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. And let me tell you, she has such powerful faith and know how to say it called Barbara. And she knows, watch this, she going to help Barbara to get her material, to have faith, to believe, and to put it in a manner. And pin it down. Now, I'm going to show you something through the Spirit of God. <laughs> when Peter came out of the boat, the storm got crazy. It was crazy, right? As when God start, let me tell you, I want y'all to get this. This is something God showed me. A lot of times, people backslide more when they get their material 
than when they have the vision. Because watch this. Now, Michelle and Barbara are not wearing. Look, watch this. Barbara, you see more than enough there? So she good. Watch this. So Barbara, like, she, she got the house. She got the car. Give me five. Don't even hang in. She got the hut. She got the things. She got, she got more than enough. And sometimes we get comfortable when we hear. But when we understand that the vision is bigger than us, and that there are more pieces, we shouldn't get comfortable. We got to live what we have. And what God does, what did I do to sisters? God begins to let me see here, cut out your portion. In alignment, God, this, 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 this. in alignment, he cut out your portion in alignment with the vision. That's why we can't be greedy. Because your portion is going to be in alignment. Let every man minister. Okay. According to his own ability. Now watch this. Let's say my sister say, let's my sister say, she say, I like this, but I want to wear, this is how people do sometimes, I want to wear her part. So she put her part down. And she going over there, and she trying to push up on Michelle. For her part. Push up, push on up. There you go. Push it out of the way a little bit. Get out of here. Now watch this. Michelle better know how to say it's written. Because she can't wear her part. It's the body. Because, but she doesn't understand there's power in her part. It might not be as big, but it's power. Because there is no insignificant part in the body. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And then God, but God knew she was going to do that. Does that disqualify her, disqualify her from being called? No. God said, no, God, let me put, he put a clause in the Bible. He says, I chase it, those whom I love. So God would be like, get your butt, get your, get your butt back over here. And then, and, again, and I'm going to tell you how crazy God, I'm going to tell you how awesome God is. Y'all will be like, oh, she done messed up. I can't believe she act that way. And then God will turn around and tell her, you next. And you will be like, how's she going to be next when she was over here arguing this thing? Because he give mercy to who he want to give mercy to. And watch this. He also saw something in her too. Even though she was, Peter at times was anxious. God ain't mad about you being anxious. He just had to line it up. He would rather for you to be anxious because at least anxious people believe that they're going to do something. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. See, she wanted. He just had to slow her down. See, y'all think God mad at people who want it. He's not mad that you want it. He just got to slow you down and put you in order. So he'll bring her. And he say, fine, let's play. Where's your peace? Right here. Let's see. Slide a little bit to the edge, mom. You gonna, uh, how are we going? Y'all, y'all figure it out. What I'm trying, listen. I'm trying to show you. God is, I, I'm t- this is how God, I didn't think it is. He actually showed me this in a dream. And that's how I know that God is saying, ah, be patient. Be patient. Let me tell you something. Don't let people fool you. See, let me tell you, you got to come out the world. Because what you do is you start looking at people and they think, see, the world look like she got it going on. They got it going on. Don't look at people for your, for, for your peace. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus that you are significant. Trust Jesus that he is designing something. And you know what I love about it is? 
But I love about it. They each one, they, they're fastening in on their material. Let me tell you about the problem when you're fastening in material. Watch this. When you fasten in on your material, watch this. It now is the part. It's with you. We ain't, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't getting it. We ain't getting it. You see, she fastened in on her material. You can't take it. It's, watch this. It's alignment for her. It's, somebody say it again. It's tailor-made for her. You know why she, what she said leaped out of my spirit? Because on the dream, on the sign, it said tailor-made. On the dream, on the sign, it said tailor-made. It's tailor-made for you. It's there to be released to you. But you got to step out and believe. You got to go on the water. And you got to stop trying to turn back because trouble comes. You got to learn how to walk. Let me tell you something. Body. We have to learn how to walk through trouble. Let me tell you why. Because the Bible says life is full of trouble. The Bible says that life is full of trouble. And if you can't, if you don't know how to say, if you can, God said, I'm looking for some sons and daughters that can say, God, I want to learn how to walk through trouble. Peter walked See, people who don't walk through trouble. <laughs> See, some of y'all, you think that you're back in the world. You're not back in the world. You're just scared on that boat. You're scared on that boat. You're scared on that boat. You're crying and you complaining and you murmuring on that boat. And God is saying, I need to get some people who can walk through trouble. I'm telling you, I had, man, I know I've been talking to people, and I know this has been seven, these last seven days have been rough, and people have been having rough days. God says, I'm just trying to teach you how to walk through trouble. I'm trying to teach you how to keep here. Because some of us, we snap. Some of us, we quit. See, some of us think you would never be a quitter. And to the trouble, I, I thought that too. Never. And then thoughts quit and come when the trouble get thicker. And you let the enemy start shooting thoughts of trouble. You like, and God said, keep your eyes on me. This ain't about nobody else. Know your peace. Keep your eyes on me. Don't go to nobody else's peace. Keep your eyes on me. Because when you start looking at other people's peace, you, start getting, you become discontent. You become aggravated. You become frustrated. And then you forget that God has given you a peace. Be open and understand that God is going to create the material. God is the one that's going to bring the material. And when he brings it, it's going to be more than enough. God doesn't do anything halfway. There was 12 baskets left. Am I right? 12 fragments left. He fed 5,000. Please get this revelation. He had five loaves, two fish. It looked like it was not enough to feed everybody he had. But because they looked to Jesus, he took five loaves and two fish and blessed it. And everybody ate till they were full. Everybody had more than enough. And he said, pick up the fragments. And they had 12, $12 million in the account. You ain't got to let $12 million when I, in the account. Just left over, money left over. That's after you have enough for what I'm calling you to do. But through the trouble, he praying. He praying for what he gave you. Lord, give us strength. Lord, give him courage. Lord, restore her hope. Lord, let them be of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Focus. Focus, Peter. You know what Jesus is saying? It's me. 
I'm the one with you in the fire. I'm the one with you in the lion's den. What am I saying? It's, the, it's not going to devour you. You're not going to, look at somebody say, you're not going to lose. You were not designed to lose. Because your God is El Shaddai. Somebody say, my God is El Shaddai. El Shaddai means creator. My God is El Shaddai. means that he can create. Yeah, I got to get this. Come on, everybody. I went to the screen. He can create out of nothing. He's the only one ever. That's why you can't be on a man. You know what I'm saying? We honor a man. We're like, man, we honor you. But man has never been able to create something out of nothing. There's only one who had the ability to take nothing and say, let there be light. Bam. And say, let the stars. Bam. And say, dust. Breathe. So that means no matter how bad your situation look, no matter how bad the storm is, your job is to focus. Focus. Is that you, Jesus? You behind this. <laughs> that's you doing this. That's you, Jesus? If that's you, beckon me to come to you. Watch this. Don't let me cry. Let me play this, play that song. Play this, play it, play it. If that's you, Jesus, I want y'all to hear this song. If that's you, Jesus, this is what I want to say to Jesus. Watch what he say. You need to hurry up because I'm looking crazy. I feel a special anointing in this place. Do you feel it? The glory fills this place. Listen to what he's saying. Could you just, for just a moment, with the fruit of your lips, just begin to thank God. Come on, in your own words, if he's, if he's been good to you. If it wasn't for his grace, you, you wouldn't even be here Come on, tonight. Come on, hear him talk. He's been good to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I dare you to just give him the praise to Lord. Whatever you do in this season, in this season, please go do it without me. Come on, Peter. Peter say, whatever you're doing, don't do it with It me. might be a storm, and I can't see what's going on, but God, I just want to be a part of it. Whatever. I just want to be a piece of it. I just want to be a piece of it. In this hey. Come on, come on, church. Lord, what what is
Don't let me be so prideful. Don't let me be so ignorant. I miss out God. Whatever, whatever, whatever I come humble. Whatever you're doing, I just want to. I don't care how big my piece is. Just let me be a part of it. Give your father some praise. Give your father some praise. Whatever you're doing in this season, come on, somebody. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. That's my testimony. That's my request and my whatever. You're doing it this season. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. You know, I had to find out whatever your piece is. Whatever you're doing, all I want is don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. I dare somebody to get up and praise and tell them, don't do it without me. If it wasn't for me. his grace, you, you wouldn't even Whatever be here tonight. But he's, you're he's doing been. it this season. Don't Hallelujah. do it without me. Hallelujah. God, make me humble enough. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just want to be a part, God. It's an honor to, just to be a part of God. It's just an honor. Come on. 
It's an honor just to be oh. a piece. Whatever. Come on. You doing in this season? Please go do it without me. Lord, I'm, I'm surrendering today, God. Put me back in my position, God. Put me back in my place. If you need to come to the altar, it's up or whatever. God, forgive me for looking at somebody else's peace and getting aggravated. I just want to be glad about my peace, God. And I want to cheer for somebody else. I want to celebrate somebody else's peace. I want to embrace somebody else's peace. I want to be so happy about what God is doing. Lord, whatever you're doing I don't want to stay on the boat no more. God, I'm like Peter. I'm coming off the boat. You got to tell them for yourself. Don't do it Come on. Come on, say it like you mean it. What, Lord? Whatever I just want to be aligned with you. I just want to do what you want me to do. I just want to be a part of the kingdom. Ooh, I just want to be a part of the kingdom. That's all that matters to me. I can sweep the floors. I can wash the window, whatever. As long as I'm a part of you, God, as long as I'm a part of what you're doing, Bless us. Please don't do it. Bless me, God. Bless me too, Lord. Bless me too, God. It's your testimony. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. I don't care how stubborn I am. I don't care how crazy I am. Don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do. If you got to break me down, break me out. Come on, give your father some praise. I want to read this scripture to you to let you know that God is not going to do it without you. John 16, 33 says this, I have told you these things 
God says, I have told you these things today. I'm bringing it to the day. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. God says, I'm telling you these things today because I want to restore your peace. He says, in me, you will have peace. In the world, you will have trouble. But here we go, y'all. But take heart. Look at someone say, but take heart. I have. I have overcome the world. Hey! He said, take heart. For your eyes are on the one who has overcome the world. Though the world is full of trouble, he said, take heart. Find yourself. Find your peace. Keep your eyes on me because I have overcome the world. So fret not, neither be afraid. Everything you need, everything I have designed for your life, that when you was in your when you wasn't even a thought in your mother's womb, for my purpose. Some of us are at a different places, but we all at the place of getting peace. We all got pieces for the kingdom. And there are words that God has spoken to you and spoken to many of us. And God says, stay focused, for the material is coming. It's coming. Stay focused, for it is coming. He said, don't get worried because I'm just still adding pieces. I'm still doing some things. He said, but mama, he said, I never speak a word that I can't provide for. I never say something that I can't do. So delay does not mean no. It just means stay focused. And hold on to your peace. The Bible said it like this. Fight the good fight of faith. And if you see somebody else and God adds something to them, don't be jealous. Don't be angry. If he adds something to them that you like, God, I really would. Don't be jealous and be angry. Because if they rejoice with them. Because when God adds things to you, you're going to want people to rejoice with you. But understand in the big picture, in the big thing that God is doing, in the kingdom, we are all pieces. So no matter how many things somebody might get on this earth, as long as I'm in the kingdom, I'm good. I want to tell you, I thank God for it because God put that thing in my spirit. He says, God is the teller. It's coming. He got you. You got to, the enemy has been trying, he say, the Bible says he's going to try to weary the saints. He's going to try to make you tired. He's going to try to wear you out to make you feel hopeless and aggravated and frustrated. But I found out that they, God, whatever you're doing, I don't care what the enemy doing. But whatever you're doing, God don't do it without. And I pray in this house that we are raising up some Peters who will get off that boat. Some of us, we lay in the bed. We got the cover on us all day. We sitting there acting like you don't have no God. You sitting there looking at this and looking at, the, looking at what you don't have. And God says, no. No. You better get up and say what I say, Lord, whatever you doing. And then you better say the song he gave me, Joy. Because, come on, God is in need of you. He has purpose for you. The Bible says, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I promise you, you are called according to his purpose. And I, I can promise you this, God is absolutely in love with you. So we thank God 
today for his word. I don't know, but I thank God for this word today because, boy, this word was like, I said, Lord, And I'm telling you, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. There's a lot going on in the world today. Man, people hating each other. Man, people just mad. People just angry. The political parties, all that stuff, all that. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I hate Donald Trump. I love all that. Man, keep your eyes on Jesus. People hating each other, black, white, hey, God, no, keep your eyes on Jesus. And whatever God is doing, I want to be a part of what God, I, I, don't get me wrong, I, I give honor, God establishes the power, I, I, I honor Trump, I honor Don Obama, I honor them according to what God is having them do and what God's going to do. But let me tell you something, my hope is in nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Because I'm not saying, Donald Trump, whatever you do, don't do it without me. I'm not saying, Obama, whatever you do, don't do it without me. I'm saying, Jesus, whatever you do, don't do it without me. Because I know you won't forget me. Sometimes people will forget you. So, Father God, we thank you today for your word. I pray today that this word has fallen upon good ground. That you walk out of here empowered with the Spirit of God, understanding that, Lord, I just love the peace that you gave me and what I got to do for you. And I can encourage my brother and my sister to be about their father's business as we build the kingdom together. I want everybody to rise up for a minute, if you can. I want to declare and decree as the apostle in this house, not, not an apostle that has anything new, because I'm not an apostle. With my, the word I have is nothing new. It is the apostle's doctrine. It is to bring you into remembrance of the apostle's doctrine, not my doctrine. I have no new doctrine. I have no new revelation but to bring you into remembrance of the revelation that was given by the apostles, which was given to them by Jesus Christ. Amen? Let us rise up together. Let every young woman and young man in this room understand that you've been called for a time such as this, that you are not insignificant. You are of great value in the kingdom of God. Let us rise up together and build the kingdom together. Let us not devour one another, but let us love one another. Let us encourage and strengthen one another. Let us edify and exalt and lift up one another. And they don't have, people don't have to go to this church. I don't care if they're a son and daughter of God, whatever house they go to, let us edify and exalt and build up one another. It don't matter what color they are. Black, white, red, or blue, it don't matter. Let us edify and exalt and build up one another. For we are, one, we are one body. Many members, all over the world, many members, but one body. And we cannot hold racism or hatred in our heart for anyone. So, Father, we thank you today. We give you the glory and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, look at somebody, give somebody a hug and say, I receive it and have a seat for a moment. Give somebody a hug and say, I receive it.